This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. The inaugural World Relays continue to draw nearer, and the IAAF conducted a press briefing early today to provide an update. Our Charles Fisher was there. Exactly the big 5-0 days before the World Relays, Anna Lagani, Director of Communications for the IAAF, and her crew have given organizers a thumbs up. I'm uh, pleased with what I've seen because, of course, we're still uh, 50 days uh, from the event, but uh, all the plans are uh, really up to uh, IAAF standards and we do have very high standards at the IAAF so it's not always uh, easy for organizing committees to uh, provide uh, everything that we request uh, for our events but uh, I definitely am very pleased with what I've seen in uh, all the plans all the preparation work of course now is the last weeks uh, to make it all uh, happen in real life but I'm really confident uh, that this is going to work out very well media operations and communications worldwide staff and Theus also pleased with what he has seen I'm very optimistic we we know we still have a way to go we have a lot of work to do for the next 50 days, but let me underline how how uh, happy I am and how big the pleasure is to work with Tonique on this. It would not be possible to significantly uh, organize if you are living abroad. And Tonique, she has been a very talented athlete, obviously, and now she's discovering talents <laughs> she did not know about before, I think. So she is really doing a very good job. Tonic is the Deputy Director of Events Media Service and encouraging the local media to get accredited since not much have done since it opened March 17th. I just want to encourage our local media not to wait for the last minute but to um, request your access code at media at bahamasworldrelays.org. Um, we welcome you and we want to make sure that we have our presence by local media because I assure you that the international media has already start applying. So far, the interest is high from the international media for this event. We've already had a lot of people contacting us before the accreditation process was open and that uh, they do want to come. Now, it's also true that for a two-day event, the trip from Europe can be rather expensive. So sometimes the editors are uh, a little bit hesitating about uh, sending their, uh, their journalists here. But there will be uh, high media coverage from Europe, from the US. There's a lot of uh, journalists who have expressed uh, interest. And uh, I was in, the, um, in Jamaica last week, and we were working with uh, uh, top athletes for uh, the Day and the Life program. And there's a huge excitement uh, on the athletes' uh, part. 50 days to go and the Bahamas is out of the blocks running on a successful World Relay 2014 Bahamas. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Now for those of you wondering, the Day in the Life of program that is being featured here in the Bahamas next week starting on Monday and two of our Bahamian track and field athletes will take center stage. We'll be uh, working uh, with uh, uh, an amazing uh, young man who seems to get younger and younger as time <laughs> goes by, who just set a personal best uh, in uh, winning a silver medal at the World Indoor Championships, uh, Chris Brown. But uh, we will also be, as I said, profiling Tony, so uh, see her as an organizer, see her uh, interacting with uh, her uh, athletes and if we can persuade her to postpone her morning run from <laughs> five when there's no light and we can't film anything to seven, <laughs> we'll do some of that as well. The Carifta Track and Field Trials got started this evening and will continue again tomorrow at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The team will be released on Sunday and B3A's President Mike Sands expects Ian Kerr's name to be on that list. I've watched Ian's progress over the years and he's been progressing very, very steadily uh, and he really has come into his own. You know, anytime you uh, run a sub-21, you become legit. Now, while Ian Kerr is expected to be named to our Carifta track and field team, his brother Cohen has already been selected to the Carifta swim team, and he's gearing up for the championships, which will take place at the end of this month in Aruba. I think I'll be swimming the 100 fly, 100 free, 2 fly, 2 free, my specialty events. What do you expect to do when you get there? This is my fourth Carifta team, and I expect at least to make finals and come in the top five. How did you do in the past? Um, last year... I did not do too well because I was my first year swimming fly at Grifter, so I just got a taste of how, how competitive it is swimming fly at 
Krifta, so it gave me a, a taste of what's coming up this year. Now, before traveling, our swimmers will have at least one more warm-up meet to look forward to as Team Orca will put on its pre grifter Invitational tomorrow at the Betty Kelly Kenning National Aquatic Center. More than likely, everybody will probably be here to swim. Uh, it's, it's really being supported really well for most of the clubs uh, the last few years. It's, uh, it's our fourth annual time. Uh, you know, we've only been around for five years, so it's been, it's been growing every year. The Catholic Primary School's best of three basketball championships taking back to the floor yesterday at Loyola Hall. Up first in girls play, it took overtime, but the St. Thomas More Sparks held off the St. Cecilia Strikers 11-10 to tie the series at one game all. The overtime was nothing. I think we should have won the game. We missed eight crucial layups. So with this game was over, we should have just hit eight, one of the eight crucial layups. I think we performed really good, and especially for me because I'm usually the one that throw back and misses all of the balls and stuff. But my coach said I um I really play well today. It wasn't nothing wrong, you know. I felt that we needed to pass more and get harder on defense. But it doesn't hurt me that the game. It's not that I lost the game. It's what the spectators are saying to us children. I feel as if they should watch their language with us. They're using improper language with us and I don't think it's a good thing to do. On to the boys now and it appeared as though the Xavier's Giants were on their way to a two game sweep but St. Thomas More came up big down the stretch and the Sparks kept their title hopes alive winning 27-24 to force a winner take all game three. We start off real good then at the end we just get our turnovers so we started to slow down and get the ball and work it inside the paint. I mean hats off to St. Thomas More they, they played a great game today I mean we just came out flat and we just ended the game flat. We never gave up. We, we went back to the drawing board and realized that we got beat by beat on the press. So we dropped it into a two-three zone, and we found they found it found out that it was very difficult for them to shoot on us. A lot of li miss layups, miss layups, miss layups. That's what kill us. We said we don't go home, and we didn't decide to go home today. We come to win. We was looking to close it out. We was looking to celebrate today, but unfortunately, that did not happen. Now we can tell you game three in both of those series took place today. Congratulations going out to St. Thomas More. They won the girls championship. Xavier's are the boys champions. Well, moving right along, the 2016 Olympic Beach Volleyball Qualifiers are right around the corner and come tomorrow at the Bahamas Football Association's Beach Sock Facility. That's by the Sydney Port J Bridge. The Scotiabank Defenders will put on a warm-up tournament. I'm expecting a lot of mail, especially because they have their first outing in July and we're hoping to host that here in Nassau, Bahamas. So I'm expecting a lot of male and female teams. We're also getting our youth involved, so we're looking at our under 20 men and women. So we're hoping to have a good turnout, especially in those categories. For the open division, which is over 20, we're going to have cash prizes. For the under 20, we're going to only award them with trophies and medals. The 2014 All Anders Berry Islands Regatta is shaping up to be one of the biggest and best ever. And earlier today, the committee got a major endorsement from Prime Minister Perry Christie. The government of the Bahamas has made a commitment to North Andros that is a huge financial infrastructural commitment which will necessarily cause more and more people and more and more money to be present in Andros and so you're gonna therefore have the privilege and the experience of working in tandem with the government as you now bring about a renaissance in regatta life in Andros and I say in Andros because what I would like you to do is see the significance of this to Andros and not just for the north but for Central and South, to see that this is something that you are now setting a, a, a standard um, that we must all recognize and all work towards achieving. And that will do it for sports, but don't go anywhere. There's more to come after the break. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.